So I know we've been talking a lot about Israel, Palestine, and and all of that, uh, and I want to I want to continue talking about it because uh, it's important to talk about. Um, and Alan McCloyd, a uh, fantastic journalist from the Mint Press News, um, he uh, he wrote a great article about why the Overton window is shifting um, about Israel, particularly because there because you know. There, there was a lot of, uh, especially, like, he specifically brings up 2014 when, when that, that was, I think, one of the, uh, the big last times that we big, um, had a big pushback on, um, on, on Israeli violence towards Palestinians, and uh, uh, you know, just, we started talking about the apartheid and everything, and there was a lot of pushback. Uh, people that were pro-Palestinian were uh, it, it essentially muted, it censored uh shamed uh, you name it that happened to them right because uh the narrative had to be that well israel is is being persecuted by all of these arab countries um and you know there is probably a some level of truth to that but it's not palestinians that are trying to persecute israelis in fact if you talk to most palestinians they just want to be able to go home and a lot of palestinians have even said yeah we would we would gladly share the land with with you know the, the who are now Israelis, but um, but they don't they don't want to. They kind of want to get rid of us, right? Like that's kind of what they want to do. Now, Alan McCloy kind of breaks a lot of this down, and he talks about um, uh, the progressives in in Congress and progressive Democrats in Congress. That you know, Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, uh, uh, Cory Bush, folks like that uh, that have come out and and been very pro palestinian that have come out and called out israeli violence uh basically basically pointing out how this is an apartheid state how how the the people in gaza are living in an open air prison with 4 hours of electricity uh no way to communicate right like a a a, a democracy and that's that's what israel is is uh touted as it's the only democracy in the middle east is how they kind of put it the only democracy in in, in the middle east is is touted as is that, but I don't know any democracy that would willingly blow up um, a a journalist's office, a news organization's office. That's not that's not how democracies operate, right? And then they bring up the whole Hamas is oh they're uh, oh Hamas is in there and they're a terrorist organization, you know, and and the I mean the Hamas rhetoric really shows you how. Israelis devalue Palestinians because Hamas is whether you agree with them or not is is not the question here. There, there's a bunch of stuff that Hamas has done that I don't agree with, but they bring up the human shield argument, right? Oh, well, Hamas is using human shields, and again, good guys don't fucking fire on human shields. If you are saying that Israel is the force of good in this region and is upholding democracy and is upholding all of these things, they don't fire on fucking human shields they just don't do that so so it's a moot point um you know and and hamas is the the legitimate elected government of uh of palestine so but they don't recognize palestinian people as people so why would they recognize the palestinian government as a government and america kind of goes along with that because america needs israel and and I've, I've mentioned this several different times on on the uh on the streams here is uh you know I think they need it because if things go tits up in the Middle East, if any of the wars that we're, we're, we're engaging in, the United States is engaging it in, in the Middle East goes tits up, they need a powerful ally in that region to bail them out. And that's what Israel is. I, I and, and this is, you know, part, a lot of this is my own speculation of, of, what's going on in the region and why America is supporting them the way that they are. But uh, as I pointed out, the Overton window on Israel is shifting. It's moving further to the left. It's moving further to pro-Palestinian. Um, and a lot of people have uh, stopped comparing, um, you know, anti-Zionism and anti, um, anti-Israeli warfare as anti-Semitism. I think I think the notion of that is starting to shift a, a lot more, right? And and part of it is because of these um, pro-Palestinian politicians, and more importantly, 
famous politicians, right? These are these are famous politicians. These are politicians that people um, have come out and said, well, you can't criticize them. You're not allowed to criticize these politicians. So when they come out and go against the neoliberal uh, and neoconservative rhetoric towards Israel, more people start falling and uh, falling in line with that and saying, oh, wait a minute, we are allowed to criticize Israel. In, in fact, it, it, it's so different that I, I, I think in 2018, 2019, somewhere, somewhere around there, um, I can't remember exactly when, but Ilhan Omar, who is, who is talked about in, in Alan McLeod's article uh, from Mint Press News, he, she is one of the people that he brings up is this voice that speaks out against Israel. And what we have seen in the past is that she has been a voice that has criticized Israel on, on numerous, numerous times. She called out APAC. She called out the Israel lobby. Um, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was a snarky tweet that people kind of... Um, People, people either were like, yeah, look at this, or they were just like, fuck, <laughs> what are you doing? You can't say shit like that. And to her credit, she stuck by her word. You know, she didn't, she didn't uh, bail and she didn't, you know, decide that, oh, you know what? Now that the Democratic establishment doesn't really care for what I'm saying, I'll, I'll, I'll ease up on Israel. No, she, she stuck to her guns. And and she and she was like, no, APAC isn't, you know, is is funding people to put this propaganda out there. Um. So now that they're talking about Israel, Israeli uh, apartheid, these famous American politicians, uh, a lot more people are coming out and being like, yeah, you know what, what Israel is doing isn't cool. We're not OK with it. We don't we don't think this is this is the right thing to do. Um, and the only reason politicians are saying that, by the way, uh, are because of the public outcry, the the huge protests we saw across this country, across the UK, across Europe. Um, you know, that that put the pressure on them to no longer stay silent. Uh, and and you know the optimist in me uh, wants to say that yeah this is this is what they believe, right? And and the people essentially gave them the courage to speak out against it, and and then it basically let the the neoliberals come on board with what all of the radical lefties have been saying about Palestine and Israel for for a long time now. So again, it, it goes to show you that the only way. Uh, that we get any sort of real change done, even if it's even if it's lip service kind of change, which is what I believe that this is. This, the, we're, we're not looking at a lot of major policy changes. We're not looking at a lot of uh, major paradigm shifts in, in in terms of Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib coming out and pointing out Isra Israeli apartheid um, or Israel's apartheid on Palestine. We're at least looking at the, the the public opinion starting to shift. The Overton window, uh, which if you're unfamiliar with the Overton window, it's basically what you're allowed to talk about in the mainstream. Uh, it, uh, Lee Camp describes it as as the narrative is allowed to be from here to here, and and I and I you know that's pretty accurate. I think that's that's a pretty accurate assessment of that. Uh, but you can also kind of see it in in various other different ways too. Like look what happened to Mark Ruffalo last week. Uh, Ruffalo came out and, and made this huge statement that, that got a lot of attention about Israel and Palestine. And he made a very pro-Palestinian statement. And then what happened? He just bails on it. He bails on it. Why? Because the Hollywood left, who is very pro-democratic party, and the Democratic Party's, uh, their statement is that, oh, well, Israel is oppressed and Israel has a right to defend itself. And Israel is a, is a legitimate state and uh, Israel has the right to be there the whole time. You know, these other Palestinians that were there, they were just keeping the land warm for them. That's what they were. They were just 
they were just kind of saving that land for 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 Israeli Jews to come in and then oust them out of it, right? Like that's they were they were land fillers if they were like seat fillers, but they were land fillers. That's that's what they were, and that's the Democratic Party's platform when it comes to Israel. That's their that's their statement for it. Uh, so a lot of Hollywood elites, a lot of Hollywood actors and actresses and directors and producers and all that are, are very pro-Democratic Party. So they have to line up with what the Democratic Party says they should line up with. And the fact that Ruffalo was going against it was a huge red flag. So, you know, I don't know what happened. My my guess is that they threatened to uh, to 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 um, take a bunch of his projects away, you know, things that he was probably cast for, things that he probably was excited to be a part of. Maybe they took the Hulk away from him, you know, who knows? Uh, and and if look, I want to say to Mark Ruffalo, uh, two things. One, if they do take the Hulk away from you, you know, you know how to become the Hulk again. Gamma radiation. Clearly, that's going to work. Uh, and uh, or or you go talk to Ed Norton. <laughs> go talk to Ed Norton about how to cope with losing the Hulk. Because because Eddie Norts, Eddie Norts knows he knows the pain. He knows the pain of having the Hulk ripped away from him. Um, but what was kind of awesome about that was the lefty backlash that came from that. I mean, I saw more people just uh, completely upset and annoyed and disgusted with, with, with the fact that, that Ruffalo was, was, you know, changing his opinion all of a sudden, like what the facts you learned about what ha what's happening in Palestine no longer apply. Like, and and I feel I I kind of feel a little bad for Mark Ruffalo because I feel like I feel like Ruffalo was on like was making a statement that he actually believed in and then had to like bail on his beliefs because because they were threatening to take his work away, which which again shows you exactly like what what the narrative needs to be. Right. The narrative needs to be. No, 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 no. Uh, Israel has the right to defend itself. Well, so does Palestine. Now, nah, we're not going to say that, though. And if you say that, then you're anti-Semitic. And it's like none of that. All of those narratives are falling apart. All of those narratives are coming undone. People are not uh, on the side of those narratives anymore because they see what's happening to the Palestinian people. They're starting to get more educated on the Israel-Palestine um, topic, which is part of the reason why I want to do the show uh, next month, the virtual show next month is going to be about this. It's going to be the history of this and what's going on and, and how the the story got changed and shifted and all this other stuff. Like, that's kind of what I want to want to focus on. So there's a lot of great sources that I've found uh, from Abby Martin to Max Blumenthal. There's there's a whole I think there's like an audio book that's up available on SoundCloud about this stuff. So. Um, but, uh, you know, I think. And and again, I'll I'll kind of point out this in in the video we're gonna we're we're gonna watch here in a second is what you're beginning to see is a lot more people are are putting together that Israel is acting very much like Germany in the 1930s and 40s. They're acting like Nazi Germany with the with the propaganda, with the way that um, you know generations of Israelis are talking about Palestinians. That's one of the videos that we'll watch. Um, and and again, to me, it's like they might not be outright coming out and saying internment camp, extermination of Palestinians, but it's close. And you can see it in the way that Israelis talk about Palestinians. They really like they they really just don't want these people to exist, which is exactly what the Nazis were saying about about Jewish people, about black people, about the LGBTQ community, about uh, gypsies, Romas, a anybody that basically wasn't an Aryan, uh, Aryan Germanic kind of person. And it's 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 kind of crazy. Like, I, I mean, I, I remember watching this when it came out uh, maybe a year or two ago, I think is when Abby Martin put this out and then Jimmy Dore kind of brought it back. And, and, and I think the video has kind of gone a, a, a viral at this point. Uh, but you know, I'll, I'll pull it up so we can watch it. Unmuted the screen. Okay. Uh, I know we had audio issues the last time we did this. So if you guys can't hear it, 
uh, let me know in the comments and uh, and uh, I will, you know, try to try to fix it. OK, here we go. So we'll listen to what they say. I think Israelis have to take over and uh, they have to kick them, uh, kick them away. It will be much better not to, not to kill them, just to to go back to to Arab countries. But it's really rightfully ours if you look at the. His okay, before we get to this, this and she, this is this is a very younger girl. But what that guy basically said is is basically the same kind of racism that's been thrown towards me as an Indian person when I criticize America. Oh, you don't like it? Then go back to your own country. Go go back to go back to another brown country, right? Is and 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 that sort of is like it's this nationalistic rhetoric and that's what's been bred in these people is this very nationalistic rhetoric that they are better than the Arabs and the Arabs don't deserve to live in the same country as as uh, as Israeli Jews and uh, they don't. And again, it's like they keep calling them Arabs. They don't call them Palestinians. They call them Arabs. So they, they kind of view them as a separate entity, which is why they can justify because they're not the same as Israelis. They're not on the same standing as Israelis. Then then they can they can justify kicking them out. They can justify taking their land and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so this is this is a younger girl history and uh, like the wars and we didn't even start a lot of the wars and it, we we conquered these places rightfully like it's ours a thousand four hundred years later we come back now i'm not saying that we can blame the people living here for what happened but you gotta accept that that's some kind of divine justice that their great 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 grandfathers kicked my great 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 grandfather out of here and then we come back and all of a sudden they're like well no we don't want it. it's not fair i think that the jews came here wait wait okay so Basically, uh, before I go, sorry, the transitions, I don't have them memorized as to where they go. But uh, the the both of the two people, but, and, but by the way, both those two people are younger. So is this next person that's about to talk. They're making an argument for, I mean, they're justifying imperialism is basically what they're saying, right? Like that, that girl specifically used the word conquer. We conquered this land, so it belongs to us. Yeah, well, you know what? Like, Romans fucking conquered Gaul, which is now France. That doesn't mean that Italy still stakes a claim on, on on fucking France, right? Like, what what kind what, what kind of a fucking justification is that? There is no justification for this. This is this is insane talk. And again, it's like, oh, my great 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 grandfather was kicked off this land, so now we're back and we're gonna kick your great 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 grandfather, you know, grandsons and granddaughters out of this land. And they go, oh no, don't do that. It's like you don't think people evolve generation to generation. You don't think fucking people evolve. You don't think people change. You don't think the mindset of a culture can change. And all you're doing is going, this is an eye for an eye mentality. And that's how imperialism operates. Or that's how imperialism gets justified is to go, well, these people did a bad thing 100 years ago. So 100 years later, we're going to come back and do that exact same bad thing and go, ha ha, see, fuck you. That, what does that solve? All you've done is is create more anger. You've created more displacement. You've created more hate. You've created more trauma. And, and this pattern and cycle is just going to keep fucking repeating itself. And these are young people that are fucking saying that. That's how deep-rooted this fucking propaganda in Israel is. They don't view Palestinians as people. And you can fucking see it right here. Anyway, let's uh, let's listen to this, this person here. They took a... They took this land, and this is our land now. And I don't think they should be here. No Arabs, <laughs> like Arabs, no they Arabs. want. We gave them Gaza. They should, they should go live there quietly if they want. They should go back to Iraq. I don't know to wherever they want. Go back again. It says go back to your own country. Go back to Iraq. Go back to Iraq. Those aren't their countries. You're in their land, and they said that they would be willing to fucking share that with you. And you guys are like, no, get the fuck out of here. And then you wonder why people resist. You took them out of their homes and you want them to live quietly. If somebody if somebody forcefully took you out of your home, would you would you be like, oh, you should just live? No, you fucking wouldn't. That's co That's so crazy to say. All right. I may think that uh, we oh, need this is, to. This is nice. uh, How you say kick out of the kick out the air. <laughs> I don't think there's any answer to it. Really? There's only one way, like, I would carpet bomb them. You would that, carpet bomb them? It's the, only, it's the only way you could deal with it. Like, or, or try to stop them a different way. 
it, it never worked. I think that uh, we miserable the, the Arabs uh, make a big whim and uh, we need to kill the uh, Arabs. <laughs> She's laughing about it. And then she starts laughing about it. One dude just said he wants to carpet bomb everybody. Just carpet bomb Gaza. That's fine. Yeah, that's not a human rights violation. That's not a fucking war crime. That's not why the Nuremberg trials happened. Yeah, let's just exterminate a whole group of people. No big deal. And then she's fucking laugh. Look at her. She's fucking giggling about this. We need to kill Arabs. Oh, let's laugh about it. They're talking about committing genocide and, and just having a merry old time. The, like, this is the mentality that's in Israel. This is this is who we want to support. Again, the question should be, uh, well, you guys were persecuted for so long by so many different kinds of people. Uh, a, a certain particular group of people literally tried to fucking exterminate you. So why do you want to do the exact same thing to another group of people? And then they would just laugh and they would go, oh, because they're, you know, they need to go back to their own. Country. It's it, this is this, this is just insanity. <laughs> no. I think another thing uh, that the Jews should have rights to hate them. I think we have the right. to hate The Jews have the right to hate them. Dude, OK, look, I'm I'm from India. OK, and and the, the justification in India is that we have the right to hate Muslims because partition because they're different because they don't believe in the same gods we do or or w the list goes on and on and on uh, no I i'm sorry yes you you can hate whatever the fuck you want but when that hate turns into the extermination of an entire group of people then fuck you no like you don't have the right to that that, that is not something you have the right to do Th this is you playing god and i'm pretty sure every religion says that mortals shouldn't fucking play god like this is so insane. Like they're they're just justifying the the genocide of of a whole group of people. I don't I don't see a reason why not. I I wouldn't trust any of them. And matav shei po shalom baretz. If you can do it, they shalom and they always hate us. If you can do it, they do shalom and matav kacha lo yachol yisheir. It's necessary to to tapel them in different ways. And what else? There's no other choice. I I think we should give them a country. If you're doing any problem, you just go in there to give them a country and then it's going to be a war between countries, you know? If they're going to throw rockets, we're going to throw one big one and done. One big one and done. So if you're wondering why the Overton window is shifting, th this is why. Th this, this is what people are seeing now. This is what Israel is talking about when it comes to Palestine. And this is the country you want to support, especially after America has such a torrid affair with racism, with discrimination, with genocide. So instead of saying, hey, let's try to learn from our mistakes again, Amer you know, America's thing is, no, let's silence the people that are actually revealing this stuff. Let's try to shame them. Let's try to attack them. Let's try to break them. I want to show you guys the second video. Uh, it's from the same clip. Uh, this is Norman Norman Finkelstein. Ba, 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 ba. I want to get to the right spot. Okay. The whole notion that that Jews need to hate Muslims is utter bullshit because I'm friends again it's like the Hindu Muslim dynamic is is similar to the to, to Jewish Muslim dynamic and it's like dude I'm friends with a ton of fucking Muslims I really don't give a shit I'm friends with atheists and and other various different kinds of religious I don't care as long as your philosophy doesn't end with the extermination of someone that's not like you hey I, I'm I'm pretty much fucking good. We can hang out d despite our different belief systems. 
this is again it's like this is this is jewish people going well we've been persecuted for so long now it's our turn uh, why why would you do the exact same thing that other fucking cultures have done to you what is the, what is the fucking point of that what are you achieving There's a lot of people, like, I've had people drop me on concrete when I came to this country. I've had people beat the shit out, out, out of me. And I would never want that on them. I would never want, I would never try to reciprocate that back to, to, to them or take that anger and try to, uh, you know, basically do that same thing to another fucking human being. Because I know what that feels like. I know the pain of that. So I don't want to it, it cause that level of pain to anybody else. But apparently, it, it, the the people that are running Israel and and the and the propagandized citizens of Israel are fine with that. It's just revenge mentality. It's a whole country built on a trauma cycle. Don't you want to alleviate trauma? Don't you want to get rid of? No, you want to just keep putting trauma out there. What happens in, an, in uh, the, the, the great, 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 great granddaughters and sons of the Palestinians that are living now come back and push back against Israelis? What's the justification? Are you going to accept the same justification? Oh, well, the, well, the Jews should have their own country and they should go back. And if, if they don't, we'll carpet bomb them because that's exactly what they're saying. Just flip. Palestine with the you know Israel would that be accepted by America I would wager to bet that it won't okay so let's watch this normal Finkelstein video uh the clip it this this one does get a little intense um uh, you know just a little heads up on that during your speech, you made a lot of references to Jewish people, as well as certain people in your audience, not Jewish people in general, but certain people, especially in your audience, to Nazis. Now, that is extremely offensive when certain people are German, and they're also extremely offensive to people who have actually suffered under Nazi rule. I don't respect that anymore. I really don't. <laughs> I don't like and I don't respect the crocodile tears to, to, to the crocodile tears. No. Uh, I'm sorry, folks. Um, allow me to finish. And allow me to hear. Allow me to finish. Listen, sir. Allow me to finish. Allow me to finish. Uh, sir, sir. I don't like to play. I don't like to play the foreign audience the Holocaust card. But since now I feel now I feel compelled to, my late father was in Auschwitz. My late mother, please shut up. This is where he fucking loses it. <laughs> my late father was in Auschwitz. My late mother was in my Donna concentration camp. Every single member of my family. On my father's side, on my father's side, the Jews did not take orders against the my Jews. My father was in Auschwitz concentration camp. My late mother was in Maidani concentration camp. Every single member of my family on both sides was exterminated. Both of my parents were in the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. And it's in precisely and exactly because of the lessons my parents taught me and my two siblings, that I will not be silent when Israel commits its crimes against the Palestinians. And I consider nothing more despicable than to use their suffering and their martyrdom to try to justify the torture, the brutalization, the dem demolition of homes that Israel daily commits against the Palestinians. So I refuse any longer to be intimidated or browbeaten by the tears. If you had any heart in you, you would be crying for the Palestinians, not for what she's done. Big cheer. 
big cheer for that one. That I mean, that perfectly articulates what what the the, the points that we've been talking about in this segment. And again, I you know when I first watched this, I was like, man, I don't know if I would have I would have started with uh, with the whole I don't have time for the, you know I don't have patience for the uh, whatever he said about the crocodile tears, but I I kind of feel like that he was he was attacked so much and like the whole crowd turned on him when he was just like dude this is ridiculous like, do you guys not understand what's happening like how do you not correlate the what what are the largest events in history with what's happening right now it's just you, you we're just using different flags at this point right like i can i so i don't know how many times he's fucking gotten that response and he patiently took it and this was the moment that he snapped and that's the moment that that the cameras are on him so to me i'm like you know what no, nah, I mean, you know, you you handle that the best you can. Because honestly, like I would probably be in the same position if if I'd gotten that question 158 times. Really all this and boils down to is I and I really don't know the answer to this question is it becomes anti-Muslim rhetoric. All of it is. And I, I, I legitimately don't have an answer as to why it, they're pushing such an anti-Muslim rhetoric, but that's what it is. They don't call them Palestinian. They call them Arabs. They look at them as Muslims. They, they, they claim that they have the right to hate and they have the right to kill. They want to murder all of them. They're laughing about it. But it's, it's anti-Muslim. I'm not saying it's a perfect religion, but, but name me one. I'll, I'll use the same fucking thing that other people you know, say to me when I criticize America, name me one fucking religion that is. You can't. They're all flawed in their own way. Why? Because they're all created by human beings and human beings and life in general is flawed. That's why evolution exists. All right. Uh, I'm going to look up, uh, look at some of your comments. Uh, but, 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 uh, Got to go all the way up. Uh, Holly points out Vanessa Redgrave spoke for Palestinians and was uh, ostracized. I am going to have to look uh, her up. Uh, and you say Jimmy Carter did the same thing. Uh, yeah, the only president that hasn't started a war in America. And they are, yeah, they're still sending $735 million to Israel. Uh, <laughs> they shook their fist at Mark Ruffalo saying you'll never work in this town again from cynical girl. Um, uh, by the way, a lot of Palestinians disagree with Hamas, but support it. Yeah, I think, I think they elected them into office. And I mean, how, how different is that? Right? Like we elect somebody into office and then we go, Oh shit, this person isn't who they claimed that they were. Oh man. I guess I don't, I, I, I guess I, I have to, you know, kind of play supportive of the american government but i don't support what this administration is doing how many times how many times do we fucking see that uh mark viola not enough debate over this focuses that uh the fact that both sides are wrong there are no good guys in this mess just civilians and people who get uh money and power through violence uh i don't know if i fully agree with that statement based on all the stuff that i'm continue to learn about about the region um i i will say that yes the the victims in this are the average people and more so in palestine than israel I, I, israeli civilians seem to be doing fine they they are not living in an open air prison they, and they don't have a minimum of f fucking uh, or i should say a maximum of four hours of electricity with no internet their their buildings aren't getting destroyed non-stop and they don't have enough concrete coming in to rebuild um so really the it tips to palestine being victimized far more than israel does um and again you don't have to agree with what hamas is doing but if you're going to make the claim that israel has a right to defend itself then so does palestine uh so yeah Right, Kathy points out, but but they're the victims. Yeah, Israel points out that they're the victims, uh, uh, all all the time. Uh, how can they do that to others? What was done to them is astounding. Yeah, again, it's just it's just rewriting history. 
um, or, or ignoring a portion of history and saying what happened to us was terrible, but it's a double standard because if it happens to another group of people or if we commit the same kind of atrocities, the same kind of actions to another group of people, you can't say that because we went through all that trauma. You know, again, it's like it's it's essentially like everything terrible about dealing with mental health is how Israel is operating, um, you know, continuing that trauma cycle. CG is saying they they say that to brown people who were, quote, born here. Yeah, they say that to anybody that doesn't fucking look like them. And 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 this is and again, it's like that's very similar to the same mindset. It's like those Palestinians were born in that land. They lived on that land. Their families are part of that land, yet they're not allowed to be a part. They're not allowed to go home. You know, uh, Kathy points out people who just want to live in peace. Uh, CG says the worst part of it all, the younger are, uh, are already conditioned and propagandized, which makes the future for change look in incredibly grim uh, to, to some degree. But that's where I think the American narrative needs to come in and and where this the shift in the Overton window in the States might convince some you know newer generations that the next generation of israelis coming out to say yeah what we're doing is not okay and i do believe that there are um some people in is in israel itself uh that don't that don't like what they're doing holly points out the oppressed becomes the oppressor yep yep exactly uh kathy says the dirty little secret is out of the bag the whole world knows you can't unsee what we've seen Yes, but the uh, the only statement I'll make to that is you can't unsee what we've already seen, but um, uh, they can deny it, <laughs> and they do, right? Like they're they're like, oh no, that didn't happen. It, I don't know. Those, you know how buildings just fall. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's like the way that they, it's like the way that they talk about like the death of Palestinians. Right. Israelis were attacked by missiles. Palestinians, they just happened to die. You know, we don't know what happened. Uh, somehow they just spontaneously combusted. It was crazy. What a what a nutso thing to you know what? We should probably just kind of put them in an open air prison so they can quarantine uh, or they can spontaneously combust uh, by uh, by themselves. <laughs> Uh, Hamza over on uh, over on the rock fins. Thank you for joining us, Hamza. Hamza says Hollywood is very pro Israel. Fuck Gal Gadot. <laughs> yeah, I, I she, isn't she doing some fucking documentary talking about displaced people or something? <laughs> Just like, oh man, how do you not see it? Hamza says the young fucks were fucked by Roger Waters. <laughs> Uh, the young Turks are now being called the young fucks, right? Or isn't that what he called them or something like that? I can't, I can't, uh, I can't remember. Uh, a dingo ate me baby. Thank you for joining the stream. Uh, can't have Zionism without racist nationalism. Yeah. I, which is exactly what Zionism is. It is, it is a, it is pro Israeli. It is not pro Jewish people. It's pro Israeli. And we talked about how part of that part of that propaganda is the flag of Israel itself that has um, the Star of David fucking prominently in the center, making the religion, the philosophy and the way of life central and connected to Israel. So if you criticize Israel, you are criticizing uh, uh, the, the Jewish religion, the Jewish way of life, the Jewish people, every Jew across the country. And, you know, it, I mean, that propaganda, I mean, that level of propaganda has worked, unfortunately. And but again, with the Overton window shifting, we are starting to see all that change. So thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people-powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. 
Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it, and uh, and you guys help keep this uh, keep keep this this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.